Welcome to the Digital Marketing Insights Podcast, brought to you by Brightside Digital. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the show. I'm delighted to say we have Michele here today, who's the founder of Impact 8, a digital marketing and strategic marketing company. And Michele, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here and to be part of the conversation. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, no, I'm delighted to have you on. And yeah, I think we'll start off just by you telling everyone a little bit about your career to date, but especially what you're up to nowadays. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. So, well, my name is Michele. I'm originally from Italy, although I basically spent my whole professional life in China and I spent there um, 13 years. So um, I moved to China uh, because of, uh, you know, I, I studied Chinese at university. I did an exchange a semester and I loved it. I stayed and uh I started working in marketing at digital agencies, uh, first in Beijing and then um, Shanghai, until I finally uh, moved to southern China to join a uh, manufacturing company, um, low volume and prototyping uh, company in southern China. Um, and then uh, in the last few months, I actually relocated to Canada, to Vancouver, BC, where I uh, joined, where I uh, founded my, my own company, so Impact 8. Brilliant, brilliant. And what would you see as your main strength in digital at the moment? What, what's your go-to comfort zone? Right. So I would say definitely for me is a brand and marketing strategy. And specifically, what I really like to do is to you know work with um, with companies that want to improve their brands, that want to improve their marketing strategy. And for me, especially, it's working with um, industrial companies. And I know this is kind of a niche um not everybody i guess is working with his um with his uh companies but i find it um i really like it and that's because you know i started working with industrial companies with manufacturing companies and you know the more you talk to people the, the more you talk with the engineers with the with the founders they these companies often have a very rich history um they have great capabilities but Sometimes, or at least, well, many, actually, most of the time, they fail to convey that story. They fail to convey their uh, their excellence in a way. And so for me, it's, you know, it's really something I like. It's working with these companies, making sure that um, we can bring out their essence, uh, making sure we can um, position them in a way so that they're you know, different, um, they can, um, you can differentiate them from the competition. And I think this is, um, uh, this is something very powerful and something that I really enjoy doing. And also, um, when, again, working with industrial, uh, companies, um, I found that a lot of them, they have somehow, uh, some, let's say old fashioned marketing strategies, which is not to say these strategies are bad. Sometimes the, the, the old strategies are still good and very effective but they can be somehow limiting um you see um, most of the companies that i that they talk to their their only marketing could be some cold emails um a little bit of advertisement actually you know pouring money on 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 on, on google ads and uh, you know these strategies definitely belong you know in a good marketing strategy but there's more out there there's more that you can do um but, you know, especially when it comes to uh, industrial companies, they somehow, they somehow think that, you know, specifications are the most important thing or that people don't care about, about anything. It's just, you know, um, it's just the, the final product. But I think that actually um, more can be done and definitely uh, the companies that are doing, um, that are working on their brand, that are, um, that are using uh, well-developed marketing strategies, I think they are definitely um, seeing the benefits of that. And um, so, yeah, this is basically what I enjoy doing. Yeah, and like you've kind of nicely led into my next part, which is have you got an example of a campaign where you did manage to like apply all those things and uh, and yeah, create a really good campaign work from it? 
Oh, sure. So basically, um, as I mentioned, I uh, I worked at this company uh, called Star Rapid. They're a leading um, low volume and prototyping company, a manufacturing company in, um, in southern China. And so again, they when I joined the company, they found themselves in, in this position. I mean, they had obviously they had an advantage. They had um, uh, they had their own USPs, but they weren't really well communicated. And so we worked together to create a um, a very good brand strategy. And so I think that the most powerful campaign, the most powerful initiative was really our um, YouTube um, uh, campaign, if you will, our U- YouTube channel. Yeah, so with the, the YouTube channel, I think it was very, um, uh, very powerful. Uh, we grew the channel from uh, 1,000 to 20,000 subscribers, which may not be much in terms of, you know, some of the huge channels on YouTube. But we're talking about a very niche topic, you know, low volume manufacturing, prototyping. And especially, you know, you see some of the other, some of the major corporations in this, in this industry based in the U.S., they, they don't get more than, you know, 10K subscribers, for example. And so with, but, you know, the point is with this, with this YouTube channel, we were really able to showcase the essence of the company, that kind of um, the brand, their, um, you know, uh, kind of, it's a funny brand, but also they don't take themselves too seriously, but they're also, they're also engineers. And so we, we used to create these videos, really showcasing the manufacturing process, but also sharing tips when, when, when creating products. So I think that was really a good example of how um, an industrial company can um, improve uh, can improve their brand, and I think this is also very important when it comes to industrial companies, manufacturing companies, because their audience, you know, is engineers, and engineers are some of the most curious people in the world. I mean, that, that's why they're engineers, right? Because when they were little, they used to uh, open up their toys to see how they worked, and you know. They're all about learning new things. They're all about knowing all the details. They're all about, you know, learning more also uh, from their uh, from their suppliers. So I think for them really was a great opportunity to um, to to launch this this YouTube channel. So this is something I'm actually uh, quite proud of. Yeah, that's brilliant. And like just to keep on with that. So is there any software, is there anything you use to find the search volume for those YouTube videos? I'm guessing you identified what potentially engineers and people were searching for, and then you tied that into the content to create the channel. Yes, but I think when it comes to a very small and niche um, audience, I think for us, it was more important just talking to people and just, we wanted to know what they were interested in, what they wanted to see. Uh, obviously, um, keywords play a role. Um, it, obviously, they, they're, they're very important. But for us, especially at that stage, really, we wanted to know what they wanted to what they wanted to watch. So we very often launch um, polls on LinkedIn, or um, we were quite active on Reddit as well. You know, we were really going, um, we're getting part of these communities out there, of these niche communities, but also very dedicated communities about uh, of, of engineers. And we wanted to hear from them what they wanted to what they wanted to uh, to watch. And I, we found that that was very important. Perhaps as this is also something that we did because we just really wanted that visibility. We wanted to we wanted to show people we wanted to differentiate ourselves. We wanted to show people that we weren't just just one of the many manufacturing companies in China. So we really wanted to show us, uh, them our um, our passion for manufacturing. Um, and perhaps as the channel grows, uh, maybe looking more at uh, keywords is going to be important. But we didn't want to have visibility per se. We wanted to have visibility with our target audience. So those um, very passionate engineers, people who really want to know all the details about manufacturing. Um, so that that is something that really worked for us. Love it. And is there... Like going back to softwares, is there anything you use daily that you you swear by that you'd want to recommend on the show? Yeah, sure. I guess uh, this comes, you know, this is no surprise, uh, but I would say ChatGPT, uh, or actually I use 
BART more than ChatGPT. And I think that's, um, that's definitely something that I started using more and more. Um, I haven't had the opportunity to uh, use ChatGPT4, although this is something I'm going to use uh, soon. And as you can imagine, this had, uh, you know, ChatGPT's uh, AIs in general have, you know, upended the lives of so many marketers. And in a way, I find that it's, um, on, the, on the one hand, it's great. I mean, it's, it's, it has democratized the whole um, marketing production um, cycle, if you will. On the other hand, it, it's also commoditized a lot of the content that we see online. As I, you know, as I use ChatGPT more and more, as I use Bard more and more, uh, I I can tell already, um, you know, when you go on LinkedIn, those AI generated posts, I see it on Reddit as well, you know, people just using AI to reply. And I find, you know, that's, that's not good. Um, you know, the, the sort of information that you get from those very surface level posts are, is trash. There's, there's basically no value. And so I think that, you know, we're going to see more and more of these, uh, of this content, uh, especially on LinkedIn, you know, all the, um, business owners that don't have the time to, uh, create content. So they just copy paste what they see on, on chat GPT. But I still think that it's something that as marketers, we need to use. There's no way to, um, there's no way to avoid using it. Um, and I don't know if you had the same conversation that I had, but sometimes I talk to people, not marketers, uh, but sometimes it could be uh, sales directors, could be uh, CEOs and founders, and they are somehow against the very idea of using AI for, um, um, I guess, ethical reasons. And on the one hand, I understand that. Um, definitely, especially when it comes to, you know, uh, AI generated images as well. But on the other hand, I feel that if you don't use AI, you're gonna, you're gonna be left behind. If you don't become that 10 X marketer, right. Uh, who's able yeah. to do more in, in less time. Um, then I think there's no, yeah, you're gonna, it's something you need to, to, um, to learn, use it. Um, to me, it's almost like, you know, imagine if people, when email, you know, were invented where people started sending emails. People were like, no, I don't want to send emails because that's easy. No, I want to send letters. No, uh, that's, uh, that's cheating. You know, I want to write with my own hand. Um, I guess you have a point, but it's not going to work. And with AIs, I think it's the same. And as, especially as AIs continue to become more and more sophisticated, um, it's definitely something that at least marketers need to adopt. Yeah, completely agree. Um, yeah, you have to be a 10x marketer now to survive. That's the reality of it. Exactly. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I, I use Sonic actually, as my oh, right. uh, chat GPT platform. Just from a marketing point of view, it kind of splits out all the different areas. It has all the prompts already built in, so it makes it a lot easier to create in posts and things like that. Um, but, yeah, my next question would be, where do you go for new insights, new information? Well, I would say that definitely something that I like doing is just talking to people. I think that especially when it comes to um, when working with uh, CEOs, when you're working with the um, you know, sales directors, it's really important to get a feeling of how they feel, um, especially um, especially when working in manufacturing or in, in the industrial sector. Those are one of the first sectors to you know, take the brunt of uh, new, um, you know, economic slowdowns or, you know, or rebounds. So I find that it's very important to understand, to get a sense of how they feel when it comes to the economy, when it comes to the future. So just, um, just talking to people um, in, in the niche. Um, other than that, I mostly follow, or recently I'm mostly just following the AI news. So I'm following a couple of um, newsletters. There's one that I quite like. I think it's called AI Tool Report, if I'm not mistaken. And um, it just, you know, when you follow one of those uh, newsletters, it's just mind boggling how many changes are happening daily, if not hourly. You know, every day there's something new. Uh, there's a new, uh, there's a new AI 
coming up. There's a new uh, feature, and it's uh, it's 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 mind boggling, really. And so sometimes even just you know I try to stay up to date, but it's just it's almost impossible, almost impossible. And, and I'm trying to. Um, but yeah, those are, I guess, some of the, yeah, I think it's AI tool reports, pretty good one. Yeah. The, 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 your, your spot on that is the name of it. Um, and what would you see as the biggest opportunity in digital at the moment? What, what would you be recommending to your niche or what, what do mm. you see as the biggest opportunity right now for businesses? Definitely videos, I would say, um, definitely something that, again, it's nothing new. Uh, I mean, I don't know, YouTube has been around for I don't know how many years. Um, but I would say that specifically for industrial companies, for manufacturing companies, that's, it's still something that they need to, it's still an um, untapped opportunity. Um, now, don't get me wrong, companies have already done videos and already created videos for YouTube, but they're like, you know, a walkthrough of their company or, you know, a very basic um video of you know their manufacturing capabilities but that's like to say you know that's not a video strategy that's not a youtube strategy that's like saying that you know creating a website is a digital strategy that's that's just the basics that you need more than that and so again i think that because of their audience um you know these are really people who want to learn and because of also their, uh, you know, manufacturing capability, uh, manufacturing companies have their manufacturers, uh, their, their, their factories, they have their, um, their machines. So it, it's all, they already have what people want to see. So I would say that this is definitely an untapped opportunity for manufacturing companies. I'm not sure about TikTok. Perhaps the audience is not there. Maybe something's going to happen in a few years, but definitely, um, videos on youtube is definitely um an opportunity for um for manufacturing companies yeah definitely i, I echo that if you can do some good quality content on youtube it's a no-brainer you're going to stand out from the crowds um lastly michaeli i, I want to ask you one question around yourself which is if you could bottle up one personality trait you have yourself that you could pass on to others what would it be um uh, I would say probably curiosity. I think that's definitely something that you need in general. Um, I mean, right now it's something that I need as a, um, as a, as a consultant when working with companies, you need to understand, um, their point of view. You need to understand their strength. You need to understand their weaknesses. You need to understand where they are, their position in the market. So you need to learn a lot. So every time I work with a company, it's, you know, it's a journey. Um, you need to learn everything about them, their, 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 their fears, um, their, their hopes. And so this is something definitely uh, very important. So I think curiosity is uh, quite important. And I think it's something that, you know, um, especially consultants need. But also when it comes to, uh, when it comes to, uh, in, you know, uh, scouring the internet for the latest uh, campaigns or looking, you know, at the, how videos are made or um, uh, what what's popular now in terms of, again, videos or um, any other type of, um, of media. So I, I would say to, to answer your question, I think curiosity is definitely, definitely important, the most important one. Yeah, it's such a good one. It's so important in digital as well. Um, Michaeli, how can people find you if they want to reach out to you, learn more about Impact Day and everything else? So definitely on LinkedIn. So just name and surname and you'll be able to find me or otherwise, uh, you know, um, they can visit my website. So impactday.co and uh, they can find me there. Hero. Michaeli, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank Thanks you. Thanks so much for doing this and honestly an absolute pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Likewise.